one of the things I like about the name Medusa was this Greek goddess with the snake hair that would turn you to stone if you looked at her. This has been biting people in the backside for years because we don't really know what it is. We have been producing geologic maps of portions of Mars uh, as part of a research grant from NASA in their planetary geology and geophysics program. And it just so happened that the pieces we were working on involve the Medusa fossae in the western end. That western part turns out to be, we had thought originally, the older materials. We still think that's the case, but our new mapping, and in particular using images that are better than the ones that we had back in the Viking days, show a lot more impact craters that are superposed on that material. That's the key point that is different on this paper, that we've been able to count the craters, get age estimates that are much older than we'd thought. The oldest part of Medusa fossae dates back to something geologists call the Hesperian. This is a middle period in the geology of Mars that, at least on the global perspective, Hesperian age rocks tend to have large river channels carved into them. There's plenty of evidence that Mars was wet during the Hesperian. If this dates back to the Hesperian, like we now think, at the end of it, there was enough water that the volcanic material could have interacted with the water, driven some of the explosions, and generated the potential ash deposits that we think these things may be. I have two rocks here. One is a traditional or typical ignimbrite, which is a word that geologists use for a large ash deposit that was heated to the point that it uh, caused fragments to melt and, and be compressed inside of it. This is a pretty substantial rock. This, on the other hand, is volcanic in its composition, its ash particles, but it is very weakly held together. If I scrape my finger on this, it, it begins to fall apart. This is closer to what we think Medusa fossae is like in that the wind very efficiently and effectively erodes the materials on Mars. Looking at this map, the colors on the map that you see, the lower part of the map are, is there's a lot of brown and orange color. Those are uh, the highlands of Mars, and it's highly cratered. Just in a small area, there are uh, many hundreds of craters per, per area on the map. Whereas in some of my other units that I've mapped, maybe only have four or five or maybe ten craters. That unit that has four or five, ten craters might only be a few million, hundred million years old. Whereas these lower units here, they're dating back to something like you know, three to three and a half billion years old. If the Medusa fossae was a volcanically produced material, one of the easiest ways to make ash and make a lot of it is have lava interact with water. That was difficult if Medusa was young. Um, now that we find evidence that at least the earliest parts in the western area of Medusa are Hesperian in age, they may have interacted with water on the Martian surface. That's a much better way to generate big ash deposits. And big really isn't even appropriate. These are huge. That's been part of the challenge all along to explain them. They cover one-third of the equator of Mars has Medusa fossae material on it.